Hello and welcome again to another month of our Smile Create Repeat demonstration video. Uh, this is for the May 2015 watercolor water brush box. Um, this is really an exciting box. We have a lot of great stuff in it. One of them is these nice water brushes where the water is in the handle and just by squeezing it the water comes out into the brush and into the paint so you don't need to carry around a container of water for some quick uh, sketches. Uh, that's what I'm going to be showing you today. And also there's some nice, we have some nice watercolors. This is the ones that I've been using for years um, and they're really fantastic. So I'm going to show you that also. And we're using, I'm using some cold press Canson watercolor paper and cold press is just one of the textures. Uh, you have rough, cold press, and then hot press is the smoothest. I got the middle so there's a little bit of texture on it. This is the same paper as you got in your box, which is what we have here. And what I did with this is I just cut the top of the box that your supplies came in put a couple clips on it, and then you have your own little uh, watercolor pad to work with. Uh, I'm using this pad that I have, uh, just because it's a little bigger and should be a little easier to see in the video what I'm trying to do. Alright, so I'm going to show you what I'm working on. I was driving around today, and I saw this nice barn scene. Let's see if I can show you here. And hill. Looking up, I think it's pretty cool. So we're going to work on that. So we'll get started. I'm going to start with my pencil sketch to get the basic layouts and composition. And you want to be careful when you're doing a, a barn or a building, you want to make sure you get the perspective right so it looks believable. So right now, the verticals are going straight up and down. And then the horizontal is the top of the barn is lower on the left, higher on the right. So now that I know that, I'm going to make sure all my horizontal lines on the facing side of the barn do that. And then the top edge of the barn, the other edge, then the back edge, and then where this, the roof meets the wall, the back side is going to be much lower, so we're putting it right there. I'm sitting here on the side of the road, so there's a lot of traffic, and I think uh, that they like to <clears throat> rev as they go by me, which is kind of enjoy enjoy uh, enjoyable. Good grief. That's why I draw and don't talk much. I'm not very good with words, as Forrest would say. Then there's a, there's the, I'm not sure what that's called, on the top there. And that's a little bit over. I'm not trying to do too much detail, but I do want to get all the elements that I want in there. And then there's a little, actually, there's a little evergreen tree right here. That'll be nice, because then the grass is over here, and then the edge of their property kind of comes down here along the road, where it's uh, more dead grass and weeds probably, but that'll be nice bringing it up to that pine tree. Then there's sky, there's a, a tree without leaves yet, because we've had a 
very long cold winter. There's a tree in front of this barn here. There's the redwood of the barn, and then there's some brown wood. There's a little window right here. I hope you can see all this. Oh, a big truck coming by. See how loud this guy is. Hey, not too bad. There's that. And then there's another big tree. And this one... The top of this tree is in front... This tree is in front of the barn. And the top of it lines up right with the roof. That is boring composition. So I am going to make it a little higher or lower. I'm going to make it a little bit higher. And these are all the branches that don't have any leaves on them. So that's just going to be a little grayer. And that is, lines up again, that lines up right with the edge of the barn too, which isn't great, but I like it there. Then there's another pine tree way off in the distance there. And then the hill goes down. And then there are a lot of trees way off that are not on this property, but back down way behind the field. There's also a little bit right there. This makes me think a lot of 101 Dalmatians with all the grays and blues in the sky here. Love that movie for the colors in it. Those are mostly watercolor painting. All right, so that's what we've got. Now we're going to start painting. And I've got my little uh, t-shirt sleeve that I've used for painting just to dry my brush or if I have to dab something on my picture. I can, and it's nice with watercolors. You can just keep using the same rag over and over because it dries and then it's fine. And acrylic, whereas oil, you'll need to uh, be careful and get rid of those. So can you see, and I have my, my paint just attached to a piece of foam core with some clips on top of my sketchbook. Um, one, that's just a, a nice way to paint with it. And also I did that so you could see which colors I'm using and, and what I'm doing. So I'm going to start with the background. And you can't see it, but it's it's overcast today. And you see a, a lot of the bottom of the clouds. So it's a lot of grays and purples. So I'm going to start with um, Well, I got purple here. This is probably going to be too much purple, it is, but this brush can really make that, lighten that up. And this tree, and I start out light when I paint, because you can always go darker, but it's hard to lighten up. And I don't mind getting a little paint on, over the lines, the lines of the guide. And if I just need more water, I just squeeze the brush more. That's really nice. Oh, that's too much. See, that might be a place where I dab it with my paper, with my uh, towel. Excuse me, but I'm not going to. And there's a lot of water on there now, which I like. That's called wet on wet. And that's when you wet the paper, and then you put the watercolor paint right on there. Here comes a big truck. Now I'm going to dab it. Woo! That was pool water. That's a loud one. Now I'm dabbing it and rubbing it just to get that a little lighter. So which is, the sky is very light, and that barn roof is very light. That is not that purple, so let's add 
Ooh, this paint. Mm. A blue. And there. And the opposite of blue is orange. So from if, if that blue is too blue, dab a little bit of orange in there. And you'll get a nice uh, neutralized blue or orange, which is kind of like a gray. So now I want to soften those edges. So I'm squeezing my brush a little bit. And I'm going to get some more of that gray. Oh, got some brown in there from the last time I painted. That's all right, I'll make sure I use that in the trees down here. Okay, so we dirtied up that purple a little bit. So the next thing that's closest to us from the sky, the sky's the farthest, the next thing is these distant trees. So I'm just touching that to see if it's dry, it's not. So I'm gonna think about what colors do I wanna use for that? So everything farther away is cooler. So it's gonna be a little a bit of blue in there. So let's do that. You can use these spots in your palette. As you can see right there, I mix them, I mix them in there, mix them in there. And the nice thing about this kit is you can also use the top of, the tr of your watercolors to mix in also, which I use. So I'm going to use a little bit of green. Yeah, I've got some of that brown I have in there and a little bit more blue. Just for kind of like a, a muddyish color. And that's dry. So now this tree it's back behind. There. I'm going to put a little put, pinch more green because there's a nice pine tree back there. And, kind of, and you don't want to draw it, but kind of use the brush tip to do it. And these edges are going to be a little sharper because where this dark tree is hitting the sky. that's going to be a sharp edge. And I'm also grabbing some color while this is while this tree paint is wet. I'm using a little bit of other a variety of colors just to add a little bit of excitement into that, I hope. And then make sure this edge here where the bottom of the tree meets the top edge of this field is a sharp edge. And we could go into a little more detail with those trees, but you can't see it, so I'm not going to. So now we have, this is the edge of the barn. What is this here? That's, I should have had a little bit more sky color down there and here. So I'm going to do that. And I have a little paint on the tip of my brush. So I'm just squeezing some of the water into my um, t-shirt sleeve rag and clean that up. So I'm just going to get a little bit more purple on my brush. Hopefully it's not too dark. It is. So dab it with on my towel and then blend this just to get a little purple in there and I'll just dab it with my finger to pick up some of the excess. And I'm going to do it again on this side, even though the tree's there. You can pick that color up and do it again. And that's fine. Alright, so what is now, what's closer now? So I think it's these trees. Oh, that one's in front of the barn. Yep. This one here, this evergreen is behind the barn, or to the side of the barn. It's probably in the same plane as the barn, but it's much closer than these trees. So this one is going to be a more intense color than this. So I'm going to start by trying to get that color again. To lay it down. Up to green. 
add a little blue. I'm going to dab a little bit of orange again to make it a little... There we go. And again, that's still behind this, this edge we have um, from the field. So I'm going to let that one dry. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm going to put a little more green in there and a little bit of orange in there just to bring the punch of the green down and to add a little excitement. Some of my some of my favorite watercolor artists are Bill Watterson, who is the artist for Calvin and Hobbes comic strip, amazing watercolors. Um, I just love the way he does it. And Quentin Blake, he's a children's book, book illustrator, and he does he has a very loose pen and ink drawing style, and then also any watercolors that's really loose, and I really love it. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry, and all these trees, this tree, this tree, and this tree are all in front of the barn, so I'm going to go ahead and start working on the barn. The top here is very dark red-brown, and it's, is it a warm red or a cool red? It looks more like a cool red, so I'm going to use this alizarin. And I'm just going to, and there's a little window in there, but it's dark, so I'm going to, this is not at all this color, but it's a good base to use. And then I'm going to add and mix colors on top of it. And I'm also going to use this red for the barn. And this barn is not this red at all. And I'm going to paint right over where the tree is. Oh, one of the hairs came out. Happens all the time. And I want this edge, where the, the front edge here hits the side edge, to be a sharp edge, so I was a little more careful. And this bottom part, I said earlier, is brown, but I'm going to paint it red because I'm going to make it brown by mixing. And I want to try to keep this edge sharp here. Okay. I'm going to put, use a little bit of the warmer red just to have a little variety in here. Because maybe there's some warm reflections bouncing around. There isn't because it's a cool overcast day, so there's no warm light anywhere, but I'm still putting it in there. Because I'm the artist and I can. Now I'm going to go in with some blue and a little bit of green. Oh, yeah, the cool green of Viridian. Because that is the opposite, the complementary color of the green, of the red, and that's going to make it a dark, yucky color. Perfect. That's what I was hoping for. So what I'm doing, I don't know if you can see it, um, but I'm dabbing my brush to dry it off so then I can lift up some of this color because I'm not squeezing the brush so there's no water coming through. And let's soften that edge. Now there is water coming through. Okay. That is a much more saturated color on the barn than in my painting, so I'll have to come back to that. Um, this side is very dark. I don't like to use black um, just because. If you want to, you can. You just want to be careful. A lot of people um, don't use it just because they say it muddies the colors. Um, I just like the challenge of trying to mix the color I want.
Okay, that's going to need some blue in there to make it darker and cooler. And I think I want to get that red much darker right now, so I'm going to work on that. So I'm mixing, I have some brown stuck in this where I uh, right here where I'm mixing. It needs more. That's getting a little better. And be careful with this edge. Make sure it stays parallel to this line or it's going to look like your perspective is all hokey. And that is an amateur uh, mistake, so you'll look much better if you make sure you, those lines stay parallel. Oops. And this little house, uh, whatever this thing is on the roof, comes into the roof, so I have to fix that, and then obviously the angle of the roof here, good, and then I do that just to blend it so there's no ugly edge there. And there's light catching the top edge of the roof. So when I go in and paint that, I'm going to leave a sliver of white paper, and I think that's really going to look nice. So let's go and do that. And here, I'm going to use a little bit of black. Come over here in the purple. Actually, I'm going to just use the purple. And do that. That's, that's way too dark. If that's darker at the top, then I'll use the water on the brush to bring it down, and then that'll be, that'll make it a little sharper edge, a higher contrast with that highlight I was trying to do, try to show. And I am, I am going to go in, oh, there's a darker cloud right now, right behind this edge which is really making this roof show up more. So I'm going to throw in some darker color there. One, to make it darker, to make this roof pop, but also I can work on carefully sharpening the edge between the roof and the sky. Let's see, we can see how it looks. I'm going to have to turn this so I can use my motion. Uh, bug flying in my face while I'm doing this careful work. Love it. Then I'm going to soften it. Clean my breath, bring it back. Yep. Good. And while I have that, I want to have that uh, while I'm doing it. There's also a dark one right here then fades up. So I'm going to go ahead, the sharp edges on the bottom, that's the dark uh, shadow of the cloud coming up. And then I rinse my brush off and I'm just going to feather the top edge so it blends in with what I've already got. Now it looks like I need one. Maybe I can put a little one here too, but I'm not going to, because I'm going to keep the focus up on the barn. Alright, the, let's darken that structure on top of the barn, using the brown, a little bit of blue, a little more brown, a little more blue. See, that's what I, I don't use black much because that's what I like to do. I use blue and brown, um, and it works great. 
And this all looks the same value. Even the top of this little roof that's on this looks the same value. But I am going to make the sides darker. Because they probably are. They probably are, I just can't tell. I wonder if people think I'm a police car. That guy doesn't. So they slow down and then they realize that I'm not and they get mad and accelerate hard. Get back to speeding. Oh. That guy honked at me. You probably saw my hands get scared. I have fans everywhere, I guess. So that's all wet again, and I'm going to put, try to get, get some variety of reds in there. And then, once that dries, I'm going to go in and get this brown down here. Alright, oh, and I need to add this edge of the barn. Should have been paying attention. Must be a little shaken up from the honking. What I just, what I'm doing now is trying to pick up some of the paint with my brush. And now my finger. Okay. Oh, that doesn't look good. So, well, that's because some of it was wet, some of it dried already. So now I'm just wetting it all again. See if that helps. Okay. So now this. Oh, let's go back and just get that tree done real quick. I just grabbed some green. I'm mixing it in with my whatever colors I have in there, just to make this darker. So if I want it darker, I just need more pigment, less water. So that's making it darker there. I'm gonna make it a, these a little darker back here. No, I'm not. And then I'm going to go in and touch that tree again. So now I wanna, I'm going to work on this while up here dries. And then once that dries, I can put in the trees that are in front of it. So this is a big field of green and this is yellow ochre. And it looks like, actually looks like a warm green. But because it's so over, overcast, excuse me, it's going to be a cool green. Because if we make that warm, it's really going to contrast with the temperatures and not just not look right. So I'm going, I think, so I'm going to go ahead and use this. Well, that doesn't look right either. So I'm using this. And I'm leaving that, the edge where it um, lines up with that, the top of the hill. And here I'm squeezing the brush a lot to get a lot of water going, so I can really push this around. Now, 
getting some more paint on the brush. Let's get some blue in there. Yeah, there we go. That's looking it. That's a very cool color. As in temperature, not as in, oh, cool, man. And that effect right there is because there's a lot of water. Whoops. And that is dripping. So I'm letting the water run down the page. I'm adding more to it, and it's pulling it. That's how you do washes. And right there, I just grabbed some of that pigment and water. And now I'm just squeezing my brush and using whatever water and paint is going. I'm getting a little bit of brown. A little bit of, maybe a little more brown. Putting it in there. And we're not going to see the texture of the grass way up there, because it's so far away. Now well, let's go back and throw a little bit of green in this. Oh, that's a lot of green. I'm cleaning off the paint on my shirt, on my rag. Now I'm just blending this in a little bit on the bottom. Here. Okay. And while this is still wet, I'm going to get some of this ochre color, which is the... Let's see if we can get some of that. Nope. It's not working. Just got a little variation in color. People are all leaving me a lot of room as they drive by. That's awfully nice. Yeah, let's try to bring that. So this part, I'm going to have to wait for it to dry. so I can add more detail, because there's going to be a lot of detail sitting right here, right at the uh, base of my feet. Alright, so let's go in, see if this is dry. Rinsing off my brush, get the yellow ochre. So these trees, this, the one right here, I should have paid attention more to that. It, the trunk is light against the dark red of the barn. So that one, with watercolor, I can't add a light color to that. So I made a mistake. I should have paid more attention to that. But what I'm going to try to do to resolve that is paint the red darker and leave a space where the trunk is. And then when the branches are in front of the roof, the the, the tree is dark versus the light of the roof. So I'm going to work on that after. Uh, this tree that's right here, off to the side of the barn, and then the trunk is off to the side, and then in front of the roof, that's all dark against the sky and the barn. The tree right here is darker than everything, so it's dark against the side of that barn. It might not even show up. You can see it a little bit in front of the red on the barn, certainly in front of the roof, and then definitely in front of the sky. So that is, doesn't matter what color that is, you can't really see it, but it's a dark, it's a cool dark. So cool is blue, even though that's a warm blue. And then I'm going to add the brown, because I want to make it dark. You could also use, I think this black with a little bit of blue, I think this is a cool black. 
so that might work. But we want a lot of pigment, so that means a lot of paint, not a lot of water, because we really want this to be um, pretty dark. So I'm testing it with my hand. Oh, that's annoying, guys. Sorry. The video stopped recording, as you probably found out a while ago, and I just noticed. So what I did, this tree is lighter against the red, so I just lifted up some of the paint. I used the wet brush, wet the paint, and then dabbed it with my, with my rag, and it lifted up some of the pink. So now I'm going in with some of this brown, just to add a little bit more detail. And now I'm going to dab that too, because that is way too much there and then soften some of those edges keep some sharp because they're branches and I'm going to go in and add some Ooh, there's no pigment on there okay and now I don't know if you heard I don't know if this is even in the video but I'm going to add more red to make this darker and then sharpen up that edge of the tree. And I'm going to wait till that's dried a little more because I want that edge to be nice and sharp. And so here you can see the tree blends in with this dark side of the barn, which it really does. So that's all right. I gotta add some brown there. And it's because it's overcast today, so everything is cool. And I lost the windows that I was painting, so you want to pay attention to that more. Just adding a little shadow under there. Hey, and let's add some red. See if we can cut into this. bad. Let's try to get some of this a little more green on here. And it's really green down here. And I'm going to add a little bit of the warmer green because it would be a little warmer. Even though it's dark and overcast, it's going to be a little warmer near me because we have the atmospheric perspective, which is making it cooler farther away. Now I'm really squeezing the water to get some water flowing and I'm mixing this right on my paper. And I'm actually not going to add a lot of detail down here because I want the focus to be at the top of the picture. I'm going to get a little more of the ochre, see if I can make this. It's one of the things I liked about this scene, so I want to make sure I try to get some of the warm ochre bringing us in. And there's some browns down here. And some blue, just to make it a little grayer. And then I'm just adding a lot of water. 
so it just softens down there. So, uh, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope I didn't lose too much of it with the camera turning off. Yeah, if you have any questions, email me or leave a comment. Um, and if you're interested in joining Smile Create Repeat, please go to smilecreaterepeat.com and uh, learn more about it. And if you like, uh, join us and give us a try. Um, we really try hard to make every box awesome and better than the last one. Um, hey, this bug likes the painting. Get out of here. All right. Thought it was a real barn I did so well. Um, so, yeah. So, thank you again very much. We appreciate it. You have a good month. Talk to you soon.